Almost five hundred years ago, in Shakespeare's era, a group of thespians joined together to break grounds in creating revolutionary theatres and plays. Their work can be said to be the foundational basis for modern theatre. The S.L. Shakespeare Company exists to relive that spirit, by bringing to the metaverse the bard's plays. And tonight you should see it in Hamlet Act 3, Scene 2, where we shed the theme and nature of the play. And we see, in the act of it, a noble soul here overthrown. Deception to self and deception to others. All that happens is simply a play. My dearest audience, I give you the S.L. Shakespeare Company's Mousetrap. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it, as many of your players do, I had as lief the town crier spoke my lines. Nor do not saw the air too much with your hand thus, but use all gently. For in the very torrent, tempest, and as I may say, whirlwind of passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it smoothness. Oh, it offends me to the soul to hear a robusty as periwig painted fellow to our passion to tatters, to very rags, to split the ears of the groundlings, who for the most part are capable only of inexplicable dumb shows and noise. I would have such a fellow whipped for ordering termagant. And oh, Herod's Herod! Pray you avoid it. I warrant, Your Honor. Be not your tail neither, but let your own discretion be your tutor, suit the action to the word, word to the action. With this special, or step not the modesty of nature, or anything so overdone is from the purpose of playing, whose end, both at the first and now, was and is to hold, as twere, the mirror up to nature, to show virtue her own features, to scorn her own image, and the very age and body of the time his form and pressure. I hope we have reformed that indifferently with us, sir. I'll reform it altogether. And let those that play your clowns speak no more than is set down for them. For there be of them that will themselves laugh to set on some quantity of barren spectators to laugh too, though in the meantime some necessary question of the play be then to be considered. That's villainous, and shows a most pitiful ambition in the fool that uses it. Go, make you ready. How now, my lord? I will the king hear this piece of work. And the queen, too, in that presently. Did the players make haste? What ho, Horatio! Here, sweet lord, at your service. Horatio, thou art deen as just a man as e'er my conversation coped with all. Oh, my dear lord. Nay, do not think I flatter. For what advancement may I hope from thee that no revenue hast but thy good, good spirits to feed and clothe thee? Why should the poor be flattered? No, let the candied tongue lick absurd pomp, and crook the pregnant hinges of the knee where thrift may follow fawning. Dost thou hear? Since my dear soul was mistress of her choice, and could have men distinguished, her election hath sealed thee for herself, for thou hast been one, and suffering all that suffers nothing. A man that fortune's buffets and rewards has ta'en with equal thanks. And blessed are those whose blood and judgment are so well commettled that they are not a pipe for fortune's finger to sound what stop she please. Give me that man that is not passion's slave, and I will wear him in my heart's core, I, and my heart of heart, as I do thee. <sighs> Something too much of this. There is a play tonight before the king. One scene of it comes near the circumstance which I have told thee of my father's death. I prithee, when thou seest that act afoot, even with the very common of thy soul, observe mine uncle. If it is a culted guilt, do not itself uncannel in one speech. It is a damned ghost that we have seen, and my imaginations are as foul as Vulcan's stithy. Give him heedful note, for I, mine eyes will rivet to his face, and after we will both our judgments join in censure of his seeming. Well, my lord, if he steal aught the whilst this play is playing, and scape detecting, I will pay the theft. They are coming to the play. 
I must be idle. Get you a place. <laughs> yeah, the majesty. The poor, the very cares. They are the very men, I tell you. Comedy cannot be too heavy or tragedy too light. How fares our cousin Hamlet? <laughs> Excellent, to faith. Of the chameleon's dish, I eat the air promise crammed. You cannot feed Capon so. I have nothing with this answer, Hamlet. These words are not mine. No, nor mine now. My lord, you played once in the university, you say? That did I, my lord, and was accounted a good actor. What did you enact? I did enact Julius Caesar. I was killed in the capital. Brutus killed me. It was a brute part of him to kill so capital a calf there. Be the players ready. No, 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 they stay upon your patience. Mother, I will not sit beside you because here, here we have right metal here, more attractive. Sit by me. Oh, how do you mark that? <laughs> My lady, shall I lie in your lap? No, my lord. I mean, my head upon your lap. Aye, my lord. Did you think I meant country matters? I think nothing, my lord. That's a fair thought to lie between maid's legs. What is, my lord? Nothing. You are merry, my lord. Who, I? I, my lord. Oh, God! You're our own jig maker! What should a man do but be merry? For look you, how cheerfully my mother looks! And my father died within these two hours. Nay, tis twice two months, my lord. So long? Nay, then, let the devil wear black! For I'll have a suit of sables! Oh, heavens! Died two months ago and not forgotten yet! Then there's hope a great man's memory may outlive his wife half a year. But by your lady, he must build churches then, or else shall suffer not thinking on with the hobby horse, whose epitaph is for, oh, for the hobby horse is forgot. <laughs> 